privilege of introducing President Dave McComas, who has been at the heart and soul of CEC and transformed our organization in some ways since COVID began, because along with Ella and a devoted team, he's led a program of bringing many, many thousands of hot meals and pantry packs to shame my people in need, and lots more, and it has been noticed by the local community. It's helped cement our relationship with this community, I hope, on a permanent basis. He's going to talk to us now about the state of our club. Here's Dave.
The space age starts with Sputnik being launched, hula hoops become all the rage, and finally, in 1959, Fidel Castro becomes the dictator of Cuba. In 1960, lasers were invented. The Berlin Wall was built, and the Russians sent the first man to space. We had the Cuban Missile Crisis, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan. The U.S. sends troops to Vietnam. Star Trek, the series, airs its first episode. Then there was the Summer of Love and the Six Day War. Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy were assassinated in the Tet Offensive starting in 68. And we wrapped up the 60s with the first moon landing. The Big Bird and Sesame Street made their debut and Woodstock in New York. The 70s, the almost disaster of Apollo 13 began the decade. The Beatles broke up and the computer floppy disk was born. VCRs were introduced, Nixon resigns, and the cell phone was invented. U.S. pulls out of Vietnam, undisputed king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley passes, and the first Star Wars movie is introduced. And in 1977, in a city far, far away, Ella Bella was born along with the first test tube baby. <laughs> Afghanistan and Iran's hostage crisis began. The Russians invaded Afghanistan. We start the 80s with IBM's first personal computer being launched. The Falkland Islands are invaded by Argentina. Michael Jackson releases Thriller. Cabbage Patch dolls become the top toy every kid has to have and a new Motorola cell phone cost only $4,000. Gandhi was assassinated. We found the Titanic at the bottom of the North Atlantic. The Challenger shuttle exploded on takeoff and Chernobyl nuclear accident occurred. We finished the 80s in 1989 with Tiananmen Square Massacre, the ball of Berlin Wall falling, and the Exxon Valdez spilling millions and millions of gallons of oil in the ocean. We kicked off the 90s with some good news. Lech Walesa, a former shipyard worker, becomes the first president of a free Poland. And Nelson Mandela is released from prison. The Soviet Union collapses and thus the Cold War ends. <clears throat> there was the first, the, the Trade Center bomb was bombed for the first time. O.J. Simpson was arrested for a double murder. Mad cow disease hits Great Britain and the Unabomber is finally arrested. In 1997, tra tragedy strikes where Pr Princess Diana dies in a needless car crash. Hong Kong is returned to China and scientists clone a sheep. In 1998, uh, India and Pakistan both tested nuclear weapons and the big one, here's the really big one, Viagra was introduced. <laughs> No pun intended. <laughs> Closing those crazy 90s, the euro was the new current European currency. We begin the new millennium by mapping the human genome, followed by 9-11, the Columbia shuttle explosion, and the second Iraq war. Indonesia suffers the worst tsunami in history. Saddam Hussein is convicted and hanged in Baghdad and the iPhone is born in 2007. Cuban President Fidel Castro permanently steps down after 49 years in power, and Barack Hussein Obama was elected President of the United States. Finally, we wrap up the decade in the, tw in the 21st century in 2009 with Captain Sully landing U.S. Airways flight 1549 on the Hudson River, and Michael Jackson passes. And now for the last decade, it was a doozy one to lead off the, the century. In 2011, Osama bin Laden was killed. Pope Benedict XVI resigned, and NASA, Nelson Mandela passed away at the age of 97. Then, Apple released their first iWatch. Donald John Trump was unexpectedly elected as President of the United States. Some would say it was the beginning of the end of the world. Who knows? Britain invokes the Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty and, be, and begins the Brexit process. Me Too movement goes global, and finally, 
Plus, uh, pro protesters take to the street in Hong Kong. Not to be outdone by the, those nine decades, but the 2020s began with COVID-19. Man, we have seen a lot. Have you ever stopped to think about everything that's occurred in your lifetime? They say the cumulative amount of human knowledge doubles every couple of years or every year or so. Who knows what we'll see in the balance of the years, but somehow I think this year may be the most talked about thing since my World War II ended, where 60 million people perished. Our grandkids are going to be telling their grandkids about the way many of us heard from our grandparents about the Great Depression and the Great War, or having to walk to school seven miles in the snow, uphill both ways. <laughs> it was a biggie, clearly a generational event. I think in many respects, we were fortunate to be here in Chiang Mai, but we didn't take the brunt of the pandemic. As of September 25th, a couple of days ago, Thailand reported 3,519 cases of COVID with only 59 deaths. We still have 100 people hospitalized in the kingdom as of today. And I think everybody's aware, Thailand's done a pretty terrific job controlling and containing the virus, especially here in Chiang Mai. Worldwide cases as of Thursday had over 32 million confirmed cases with just under a million deaths and 9 million people still under care. Here's what we did at the CEC during the great uh, pandemic of 2020. We started the donation drive, and here's what we were able to accomplish. We started with the firefighters assistance on Doisetep Mountain beginning March 30th and continued until the fires were extinguished with three to four visits per, year, per week, delivering water, energy drinks, canned meats, mama's noodles, boots and socks, and finished meals for firefighters and support staff, literally anything else they asked us for that we could find. We started home deliveries of pantry packs on April 10th to the no work, no pay families. We ended up assisting over 100 families with bi-weekly deliveries in each of these ways of 100 families. We spent about 44,000 baht. On April the 18th, we delivered two carloads of food to Wat Da'an Chan, where three, over 300 orphans are housed. And I can't really remember what we spent on that one, but two carloads full of food. In April, we started delivering 300 hot meals and 50 pantry packs to the folks at Wat Pa Fan. This continued three times a week until our team became injury prone, causing a temporary interruption in the deliveries. This program cost us about 32,500 baht per week. We found out Children's Corner, an orphanage in San Paton, had plenty of food but was out of critical supplies. Body wash, shampoo, cleaning items, various personal hygiene supplies. So we went to Macro and met the director, filled their pickup truck with everything it would hold, spending a little over 14,000 baht. We made two visits to the Chiang Mai Association for the Blind, where we delivered about 15,000 baht worth of food, much needed supply, food and staples. All in all, we raised over 700,000 baht, 55,000 baht a donation from the CEC directly as part of our local donation program, 22,000 from the Chiang Mai International Rotary Club, and the balance from you. I want to thank each and every person who assisted us with this very, very worthwhile endeavor, including many members still stuck outside the U.S. who made generous contributions. We still have just over 40,000 baht remaining in our fund, and tomorrow we will begin pantry packing again, this time in a new community, principally made up of hospitality workers without work. We'll continue this each Sunday until our funds are exhausted. I want to send out a special shout out to the donations team and recognize them. First, uh, Dr. David McPhee. writer of the now famous Coping with Stress column, which appeared in the news flashes we published during the peak of lockdown. And he was the editor-in-chief of all of our publications. <laughs> I think I saw John Pollock here. Where's John? Raise your hand, John. 
people that's here? Snuck out. Um, John was our head shopper and hauler and official group photographer. So when you saw good pictures in the, in the newsletter, it was when John was there taking them. Tom Stevenson. Tom was by far our fittest member, and he also had the largest vehicle, so he was the head of transportation. Vin, Vin and his volunteers <laughs> served as walk liaison officer, shoppers, packers, and food distributors. And Al Bell. Overseeing scheduling, packing, and especially product selection. And then Brian Colleen, where are you guys at? I know they're here someplace. <laughs> Brian Colleen, just to make sure that you can supervise market operations when Ellen and I took the day off. And a big thanks goes to the restaurants who supported our efforts by providing finished meals to the firefighters and the folks from the Move On surrounding Watka Farm. Ty Wiz Creations. Cha Cha Bar and Grill, and the Duke's Restaurant Group. Well, now many of you may have ate and drank a little too much over the past few months. I know I have. But we all survived the great pandemic of 2020. We have stories of a lifetime to tell and to talk about for years to come, with the grace of God, of course. Thank glad. We're glad to see you all again. I miss my serene life in retirement in paradise. Welcome back to the new norm, sort of. Now, a local of business. We have several new sponsors with us since our last meeting. We have 66 properties. Alex, are you in the room? Right here. 66 properties in this room. We can help you with, uh, you, with rentals of condos or homes, purchasing homes, purchasing land, anything to do with real estate. Uh, very, very, very ex excellent outfit. Um, Dream Cottage Village with Allen can also help you with, that's a private neighborhood, gated neighborhood with a pool um, that is mo mostly uh, op um, occupied by Farrah, the British fellow owns it. And from time to time, they have an opening there. But it's just south of the city, uh, sort of by Grand Canyon, right? right. Not yeah, not kind of out by the Grand Canyon. And they're a new sponsor. And the Lion Rapid Group, we can assist you in a number of ways, including translating documents, your insurance, your insurance needs for health, life, home, business, contents of your car. They can help you dealing with immigration, all legal matters can arrange corporate finance and assist in property investments. They all have new ads in the newsletter. Please take a look at them if you need some of those services. And finally, the virus played havoc on our workforce, and we're woefully understaffed with Muffet and Rhonda stuck in the U.S., Laura's in Canada, Al's in Pattaya. Clarence had the lead to assume the presidency of the Rotary Club, and Connie got work questions. So if anybody has some spare time out there, we certainly can use all the help we can get. We're going to go to our main pre presenters now to talk a little bit about the visa situation 